Hey guys and welcome back. The moment of a lifetime has finally arrived. People are now finishing off their last shift at work. People are finishing off their time at university, college, school, whatever you name it. And everyone is heading down to London either today, tomorrow or the Sunday for the Carabao Cup final against Manchester United. I'm here in this video today to more or less give you a final message ahead for the game. I tell you a couple of bits of news that came out either this morning or last night regarding one, the injury of Marcus Rashford. Is he actually injured for the game? And two, a little bit about Nail Ranger as well, because you see my Twitter page yesterday, we kind of got into, I wouldn't say beef with him, but yeah, we definitely got a little bit involved with him over him selling Carabao Cup final tickets. But anyway guys, welcome back. If you are new around here, make sure I get down there, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button as well. As for the weekend itself, I'm going to tell you my plans today on what I'm personally doing for Wembley weekend. So if you guys want to get in my videos, you just want to come and meet me there. Kind of opportunity here. And then once I'm done in this video, I'm going to show you some interviews at the end as well, where you might have seen it a couple of times in YouTube videos when Newcastle fans go out and ask people what they think for the final, but I've did it with a little bit of a twist. I've actually did it where I've only asked Newcastle fans that live in London what they think about the Carabao Cup final. Of course, they'll be used to so many years now watching our teams get the Cup finals, but not us. So yeah, bit of an interesting one. But anyway, guys, that's about it. Without further ado, let's get into it. First off, regarding the injury to Marcus Rashford. So Manchester United got the 2-1 win over Barcelona last night in the Europa League. Sets him up quite nicely for the Carabao Cup final. Towards the end of the game, Marcus Rashford came off the pitch with an apparent knock at the time. Then after the match, he puts on his Instagram story, just a little head emoji with bandages on, implying that he's injured to the fans. And Eric Tanhag has also came out this morning and addressed it, saying we don't know yet from the medical team, Rashford might be out for the final. What do I honestly think about it? Well, I tell you first time, I think it's an absolute load of shite from the pair of them. I think both of them are just playing mind games. I do not think Marcus Rashford is injured at all. I'll put my house on it that he will start against us on Sunday. Do not believe a word that Ten Hag or Rashford says, because I'm telling you now they're trying to play mind games from us. They must just think everyone from Newcastle, including Eddie Howe, the coach, the staff, the players, they must just think everyone in the North East is dense or something because I'm telling you, it's so obvious. It's so obvious they don't mind games. I don't believe it whatsoever. I think Rashford will start on the Sunday. Fans, I think, should fully expect him to start on Sunday. I don't think it's a case at all where it might be a last-minute call. I do generally think he's fine now. I think you be straight in the start of the And, of course, in the form of his life at the minute, we're going to have to keep him quiet on the day. One sad part about the Carabao Cup final being is that Newcastle only got 32,000 tickets for the final itself, meaning that tens of thousands of people are travelling down to London without a ticket. And because they're going without a ticket, some of the people going down are starting to become desperate, so they'll go out of their way and they spend upwards of thousands of pounds of people they either don't know or pages where it's illegal, where they're trying to go on and buy tickets just to get themselves to the final. Now, I would highly suggest you not to do that. Uh, a, because one, it is illegal, you're not allowed to do it. And two, uh, Club Wembley, the organisers making sure that people are not reselling tickets or actually going out of their way to try and cancel tickets. And of course, if you buy a ticket for two grand, it gets cancelled all of a sudden, then you just lost a lot of money and your ticket's gone. So, I highly recommend people not to do that. So, um, Niall Ranger, we're getting to him now because he's been the worst offender easily out of any person I've seen reselling tickets. So this, of course, is an ex Newcastle player. He's actually running his social media pages and he's got 100 tickets for sale. So he's actually going out of his way saying that in the Manchester United end, they're £1,000 and the Newcastle end, they're £2,000. 100 tickets for sale, contact me for all details. So quite literally, he's um, promoting a reselling page, just trying to get commission for him. So, now, I wouldn't normally go into a person's past, but this is a guy that in 2017 got arrested because he essentially stole £2,000 of someone. Online fraud, he took £2,000 of a woman. And this is also someone that's admitted in multiple interviews that when he was a child, he used to go around school to taking people's phones out of their pockets and selling them outwards. So this guy's an absolute con artist. If you know now, Ranger Percy, or you've seen anything about in social media, this guy just, the only thing he knows is a jail cell. So. So pretty much he's got hundreds of tickets for sale. I mean, you've got to be stupid if you're giving £2,000 to him. I wouldn't trust him. I wouldn't trust the guy who won my bath, let's be honest. So 
Yeah, um, I wouldn't normally do this, by the way, but there's actually the one exception where I actually contacted Club Remedy myself because I was absolutely disgusted to see an ex Newcastle player trying to profit off the fans and trying to milk them out of this situation. Um, I mean, this guy has not got 100 Wembley tickets. I tell you now, he has not got 100 tickets at all. So I was quite concerned for fans, so I went out my way to report them. Whether you agree with that or not is an odd question, but I, I only done that for, for the safety of the fans because I really don't trust this guy. So yeah, uh, Club Wembley are probably up his arse now, so make sure you don't buy tickets off him. That's probably one thing I would suggest. I know it's tough you haven't got a ticket, but do not spend a stupid amount of money from places you don't know, because chances are you are going to get scanned, and if not, your tickets are probably going to get cancelled on Club Wembley. So I can't stress enough, please don't put yourself in that position. And finally, before I show you the interviews at the end from the London Mags, I'm actually going to tell you my personal plans for the Carabao Cup final in case you guys want to get into my vlogs or you just want to come up and say hello anyway, get a picture or whatever, of course you can come and say hello if you see me. So on the Saturday, I've said this yesterday, I will be going to Trafalgar Square. If you want to watch my video about that, it tells you all the plans you need to know about Wembley and Trafalgar Square itself, so that will tell you everything you need to know about the trip down there. I'm not sure what time I'm going to get there yet, to be honest. I've I said in the video at the time that most fans are planning on going down for 5pm but chances are I'm going to go earlier. I don't know what time yet, I've got no idea how to contact my mates to see what time they're going but I will be at Trafalgar Square making videos pretty much all day long so make sure you get yourselves along there. Uh, as for the Sunday, I will be going to the Box Park Remedy before the game. You need a match ticket to get in there. After 12.30, the, the doors open up on a first come first serve basis so if you haven't got a ticket you actually can go in after 12.30 if you haven't got a box spot ticket, you still need a Wembley ticket though you can go in after 12.30 uh, for me I've got the earlier tickets that can go in after 10am and finally of course I'll be going to Wembley itself I'm actually in the bottom tier so if anyone's in the bottom tier you spot me through free to say hello I've mentioned this in a couple of videos uh, a few weeks back now I'm actually managed to get myself a front row ticket so I've been very gracious and lucky to get a ticket there so I can't wait for it now the feelings is surreal one final thing I'll probably say before I wrap things up and show you the interviews is if we lose the final, I know it's going to be very tough to take, but let's be, obviously let's remember where we once were and let's be grateful for where we are now. Um, it's going to be a tough one, but this is so good up when we go again uh, and let's not get our heads too carried away in it. But yeah, it's going to be a very emotional day and of course it's going to be, uh, it's going to hit you no matter what happens in the game. So let's make sure we can go out there and give ourselves the best account possible. By the way, guys, I'm going to put on the interviews now. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts, uh, your thoughts down below. Without further ado, let's speak to the London Mag. So, my name's Ben. I've uh, been living down London for, what, 16 years now. Uh, Newcastle fan since I was a small kid. Used to play at Walls End Boys Club. Is that a good uh, intro? <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. It's good enough for me, but 16 years you've been living down in London now. And this is, of course, the first time that you will witness Newcastle playing at Wembley in a cup final. I know. Just how's it feel for you knowing it's a reality now? It's going to happen this week. It, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, um, I don't think it really hits until I'm kind of involved in the supporters club and the sheer number of people who are looking to come down, uh, asking for tickets. I mean, the engagement has just been amazing. And I'm just, it's got me so excited. You know, like, I. I, I, I wasn't very happy when we lost against Arsenal, was very happy when we lost against Man U uh, the last time that we were in the FA Cup final. Um, but I don't know, I've got this, that little bit of hope that we're going we're gonna to do it this year and we're going to bring something home and it's just going to be mental. What are you saying there? How are you you're hoping it's going to happen at <laughs> Wembley? But what's your honest prediction for the game? How do you see things panning out for Newcastle? Oh, I was so optimistic up until the Liverpool match and uh, obviously Pope's going to be out. That's going to be difficult. Um, uh, he's been such an amazing sweeper keeper. That's helped us to keep our defence right up the pitch. Um, I, I really hope that whoever comes in is able to really, really sort of replicate that gameplay. Um, you know, Man U, we can hope that, you know, they've had quite a lot of games in a very short period of time. Maybe they won't have quite the same amount of energy coming into this game. Um, but at the end of the day, like, it's a one-off, you know. If we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. What I really want now is that we have a, we, we go and we come out of it heads held high. Win or lose, we come out heads held high. And, um, you know, because I think as a statement of intent of what everything that's happened uh, ever since Cannes is uh, more important than the individual result on the day. You know, we've got 
we've still got targets in the league that we need to hit. The, um, uh, the, the, the ongoing progress of the club, um, uh, it, you know, this could just be the start of something even more. And I want that to keep on going. Well, I think that's brilliant you put. I agree with everything you said there. So thank you so much for your comments. No problem. I'm Malcolm. I've lived in London for five years now. I've already had Malcolm on my channel yesterday, actually, where we discussed about the weekend plans for the club. But speaking from you now, you, you are part of the committee at the Newcastle Area London Supporters Group. For the people that haven't watched that video yet, you want to give a brief description of what you actually do? All right, we're a community of Newcastle fans that live in London. We are established in 1964. Obviously, lots of people move from back up home to the capital, and this is how we create our community down here. And it's certainly thriving at the minute. Of course, this weekend we have a Carabao Cup final. There's going to be tens of thousands of Newcastle fans converging on our position now. Everyone's going to be buzzing for that game. Just how does it feel now? Especially how quickly it's happened from the takeover as well. That this is this is going to happen. It's really going to happen. It's been yeah. It's been a dizzying period. I mean, we're I'm absolutely buzzing for it. Obviously, last time we got to Wembley, I was three or four years old. This is the first one I'll remember. First Wembley final, certainly. And you know, we thought it was up to us to uh, welcome the the hordes, the thousands that will be coming down and put on a bit of a show and show people where they can go in the capital. And with Newcastle fans as well, the popularity is really growing quite rapidly in London at the minute. So you want to quickly just tell us how it's sort of transpired. Of course, every match day you actually come to the Dolphin to watch the game. Every single time it's more and more people coming in. Just how's that feel knowing that the fan base is growing even down here in London? It feels fantastic. I mean, even a year ago when we were in the Dolphin here, just a few of us would gather on match day. But I think what changed was the, the Leicester quarter final. Um, and then, you know, it was like, you know, it was midweek game and there was just hundreds of people gathering in this random pub uh, in January in London. The landlord loved us for the amount of money we were putting in the pub, obviously. Uh, but ever since then, it's sort of taken off on social media. More people know about us. And uh, yeah, the club's going from strength to strength. It's strength to strength. It's fantastic. And finally, your personal predictions for the Carabao Cup final. Quite tricky to call, I would say, with what's been going on with both teams at the minute. But how do you see this game going? I'm going to try and enjoy the week and not let the small matter of the football match that's happening and ruin it. But, um, you know, I think we've got a chance. We've got really strong players. It's a final. And in that night and Wembley magic, I'm just going to look forward to it. We may not be as, as confident as uh, my baby, I may be. I'm, I'm still confident even with uh, Carrius in the squad. I feel like as long as Newcastle play a good performance, anyone will win a final. And I think Carrius, um, I think you'd be surprised by his performance. I think you will be better than people expect. So that's my personal prediction for you. But appreciate it, Malcolm. Thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure. Uh, uh, my name's Kieran and I've been in London for about 18 months now. Uh, I moved here just after I graduated uh, to get a job down here, as most people, as most Jodies do here. Um, but I'm looking forward to the final. And how has it been down in London for the 18 months for you? Has it been a pleasant experience? Aye, it's good. At first, it's hard to get used to. Like You kind of get used to London. It's mental busy. It's, it's always very fast-paced. And yeah, usually, growing up in Newcastle, you see it through the telly, you forget that it's actually a real place. Um, but joining the lads has been much better because it means you got like a bit more of a community. You've got me to scan, have a couple of pints with, and that makes a massive difference moving to London. Like So uh, I've been really enjoying it since I've been down here. And just in regard to the supporters group, actually, because, of course, we've got quite a lot of Newcastle fans living in London. For anyone that's not part of the group or Newcastle fans down here, they may not socialise with many other Newcastle fans. Just how important is the supporters group for you to actually be able to go out there and just chat to people that Aye. love the club you Aye. love? It's made a massive difference, like, because it gives you something to do on the weekends and that, like, we've got a pool dart in a football team. And, like, today I wouldn't be here if it wasn't with the like being the Dolphin if it wasn't for the football team. Yeah. A good result today and that makes all the difference. I've really enjoyed it. So it makes a massive difference. If anyone's watching and fancies joining, like get yourself doing any time. And speaking about that Carabao Cup final now, it's reality for the first time in God knows how long we were actually playing at Wembley in a cup final. Just how does that feel for you knowing that? All the Newcastle fans, I'm sure you've Aye. seen over the years in Newcastle, are going to come down to London this week. Aye. You are a home team this week. So. <laughs> I, and I, I kind of, it's weird being in London for it because I was uh, considering going back to Newcastle, but I thought actually I think it's going to be mad in London. Um, I'm watching it in the Jory Dome with the lads, so that's, that's been mint. I'm really looking forward to having a class atmosphere. I think the whole weekend, the Friday, Saturday, and the Sunday are going to be mint. London's just going to be black and white, and I'm glad I'm here for it because it's going to be absolutely class. And what are your actual thoughts for the fire? I know it's still. A bit hard to call at the minute because they've got so much going on with both teams. I know Manchester United still had to play Barcelona one more time. And, of course, we've got 
Nick Pope out for the game, so just, I don't know, what's going for your head for the game? Well, I think with Willick will be back, um, and we'll have Bruno back, and I think that'll be a massive difference. I just hope that everyone's fit, really. Um, I'm worried about Rashford, like he's been on fire, but I mean, we've got the best defence in the league, so I've got hope, but I certainly think we can do beat them in 90 minutes, like, I'm, I'm feeling confident, but you never know what can happen, but I'm, I'm nervous, but I think we we'll definitely can do it, like, definitely. Are you confident enough to give me your score prediction, or...? Um, I'm going to say, I think Rashford will get one, but I think we'll get three. Three one north. So you want Newcastle? Aye. Aye. Well, I sure hope so. <laughs> I sure do. Hi, um, yeah, my name's Matt. Um, I've lived in London for about 18 months now. Prior to that, I did like 15 years in Bristol, which is why I don't have a Geordie accent. But I grew up in Wall's End, which is why I obviously support Newcastle. Like, aunties, uncles, grandma, all support Newcastle. Um, and it was quite nice growing up when everyone at school was supporting Man U, Liverpool, was getting a load of like jip every week in, week out. But now it's nice to see us come good. Uh, it's actually a great moment to finally give some jip back, I feel like. I mean, I, I, I remember actually bef before the take, I used to, I think the airport was quite a big one actually. You would go to the airport and you're about to go on a flight and you would just get that to mix taken out. You wouldn't wear any castle tops, so it feels so good now to be in that position where. I mean, you can't really take the piss out of Newcastle because we're in that position where we can pose a threat to our team. So I think especially when you live down in London, that's where you've got all these massive teams around you. Just how does it feel knowing that you actually can almost argue back with these Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham fans? Yeah, um, it's good. Like, I go into work, I work with like a lot of Arsenal fans. Uh, obviously, they're doing well this season. Uh, Liverpool, Man U. But yeah, it's great to go back and be like, give them a result. Like, Spurs fans specifically. Um, yeah, but like... It, it just feels different like when I first moved down to London it was like two weeks before the takeover and just wanted to watch like a game with like fellow Newcastle fans right people who appreciate or understand like how bad it was under Steve Bruce and all this and obviously it was a bit of a blessing when the takeover happened like two weeks moving in and we've just skyrocketed right like to be fourth in the league is ridiculous man really ridiculous it's mental to think about how we've been doing the league but I've got to remember as well we've got a cup final this week down in in London, it's going to be an amazing moment for everyone. Just, what are your general thoughts for the game? Uh, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. Like Manchester United looked really good under Eric um, Eric Ten Hag. They spent all that money on Casemiro, and he's a born winner, right? Like five Champions Leagues. I think he's going to make a difference. Rashford looks good. Like, don't get me wrong. My heart says Newcastle, but my head's like I'm just. I'm not sure we'll win it. Sadly, but obviously I'd love to. I'll get a score prediction out of you, then I'm going to have a force one out of you. Score prediction, uh, toughy. I reckon, I reckon it'll be 1-1. One, one. Uh, I think we'll go penalties. And if we had Nick Pope and goal, I reckon we win it. With Carrius, who knows? Um, I reckon, uh, yeah, Newcastle on penalties, why not? Oh, penalty shoot, I'll have a heart will break it. I really <laughs> hope it doesn't go to pens, but I appreciate it, mate. Thank you so much. No worries.